it is that time again. The time when I am reviewing a brand new Atelier game. This time being Atelier Risa. And the full title is actually Ever Darkness and the Secret Hideout. So I have plenty of things to tell you about Risa, so make sure you watch this video until the very end. And I'm also gonna make it easy for everyone that has uh, never played an Atelier game before. So before we go on, make sure you are subscribed, like the video and leave a comment. Let me start off by saying that an Atelier game has never looked better than now. Atelier Risa is now out for the Nintendo Switch, PS4 and PC. Thank you for the review code, Koei Tecmo. Now let's begin. Story. Risa is a young girl who lives on an island with her parents. It is a lively community and she enjoys hanging out with her two childhood friends. Well, after they travel to the mainland and get themselves caught in trouble, some exciting travelers save the day and arrive on the island and the trio of friends starts pestering them and Risa becomes very eager to learn alchemy all of a sudden from these travelers. The trio sets off on a boat over to the mainland to complete tasks that they are given. So there will be a lot of boating trips in the beginning. The tall guy's father is an alcoholic, so the story around him and his family is kind of tragic. The short guy is more of a nerdy type who wants to study everything there is to study. Risa is just like a curious girl. I like that we are on an island this time around, but for the longest time I got lost traversing around, as the island is a bit sizable. However, you can fast travel using the boards that are found practically everywhere. More on these fast travel boards in gameplay. Yeah! As you can see, this is a JRPG game with Risa as the main Atelier girl this time around. Atelier kinda means workshop and from what I have found out, there is no correct way of saying it. You can actually say Atelier, Atelier or Atelier, depending on where you are from in the world, sorta. But the word is French, so you know, I'm sticking with Atelier. The base is in her room on the second floor of her parents' house. This is where you can rest, save your game and use the cauldron to do your alchemic wonders. No matter where you are, you are only a button press away to fast travel to your room to empty your bags, rest and save. However, this time around, to fast travel to other locations you have to use the boards. In this Atelier game there is no longer a star on the locations to indicate that there is a cutscene to trigger. That is a minor difference that I found. Also, I didn't enjoy the maps in the beginning of the game. You actually unlock a much better map about five to eight hours into the game. That is when things start to open up in this game, hang in there until that point. So the map that you get then is beautiful, really good, easy to fast travel to any location that you want to fast travel to. But uh, that is later in the game. So that is something you can look forward to. Risa will eventually acquire different tools like a scythe and an axe, which you have to press R to change between. You can smash rocks, hit trees and crush crates to collect materials everywhere. And with these materials you synthesize using your cauldron. Here you can create all sorts of things, like other types of materials, combat items, armor, healing items and quest items. As with every new Atelier game, the alchemy process is different. This time around you build your ingredients into a grid, I want to call it. And you can this time build on an existing recipe to create brand new recipes. It is somewhat complex stuff, but I figured it out, so that means so can you. I did it, so can you. I liked it. The 
there are plenty of things to do in Ryza. Plenty of side quests and objectives to complete. These things are probably my favorite things to do in an Atelier game. Random objectives. Loving that stuff. When you want to do some battling, fast travel to Raisin District and to Deserted Port and take the boat. Okay, you know what? I got lost so much in this game. I was like, where, how the hell do I get to the mainland? I was like, go to a bar, Raisin District, Deserted Port, take the boat over to the mainland. It was so confusing to me, so I'm sure it's gonna be confusing to some of you as well. Just mentioning that. Okay, so the combat. You touch or punch an enemy to enter the combat screen. Time always flows and you can choose your action when it's your turn. As you can see down there in the left corner. You can change between negative and aggressive modes with the d-pad up and down. Use your skills, an item or your normal attack. You can also change between the three active party members. I'm not sure what I think of this combat but I have grown to like it. The more and more I got accustomed to it. So you gather up AP, you can choose to spend the AP, you can actually sort of convert an, an older item into getting more points to use an item. It takes a little learning, it has a little bit of a learning curve, but I like the combat more and more because I feel like the combat gets better further into the game. It's pretty much like that in every game when I think about it. Hey! So Hey! Graphics. This is a game where you just end up walking around looking at things. It is so mesmerizingly beautiful with the bright colors and all that. But mostly of all, it's the lighting effects. You know how you just recognize beauty when you see it? It is exactly what is happening here. The atmosphere in this game makes me happy. Now, the character model of Risa. At the break. I was not happy with the protagonist's design when I first saw her. I mean, I guess she's fine and all, but I just don't like her clothes and the whole style they were going for, for this time. And that being said, I love Risa. Now that I got to know her personality, she's very likable. You are gonna like her. I just wasn't happy with the design choice this time around because I, don't, I didn't like it. But uh, a bunch of people do, so there you go. I like the font that is being used, you know, in the texts and the frames that goes along with the dialogue boxes. The sun and the sky look so pretty. I can't stop looking at it all, you know? The graphics are just too cute. Great lighting effects. An Atelier game has never looked better. Music. I may actually like this soundtrack more than any recent Atelier game that comes to mind. The music is sort of funny and happy. The voice acting is in Japanese and it's fine. I wish it was in English, but you can't have everything. Sometimes they are shouting when I see no real need to shout. You know, the voice acting in the cutscenes, they're somewhat cringe-worthy at times, but I don't mind. It is the genre, after all. <laughs> Verdict! This game can be difficult to get into for newcomers, I get that. But know that you can always press the plus button to see what you're supposed to do next. And just take your time with this game. The alchemy stuff can also be confusing at first. Is Ryza worth it? Yeah, it is worth it. Is it better than Lulua, which I did review? I'm not sure yet. I really loved Lilua, but Ryza is proving to be equally as good. Kinda hard to decide. Yeah, I can't decide on that one. Lilua and Ryza are both good games. I love Atelier. I love when I hit that nice rhythm in an Atelier game. While it is the prettiest looking Atelier game to date, I have liked some of the core mechanics better in earlier titles. But, but, I am giving Atelier Ryza an 8 out of 10. And that is simply because I love Atelier games. They are so cozy and good and solid. Plenty of things to do. And I kind of get the feeling that the Atelier series are getting bigger and bigger budgets. So their games are just getting better and 
better. It's really good stuff. So that was all for today, everyone. Check out my t-shirts at Teespring. Follow my Twitter. If you are new to my channel, subscribe. I appreciate comments and a like. Thank you so much for watching today. I will see you later.